Hello, everybody. Welcome to Oropeza Elementary School. I'm Mr. Little John. I'm the principal here. I want to welcome our Edison Elementary Grade 5 students to Oropeza. How do you like it? So today we have a very special event for you because you are all important. I want to introduce my good friend, Mr. Juan Gutierrez, principal of Edison Elementary. Hey, how are we doing out there, boys and girls? Hey, on the count of three, I want to hear a go Dodgers. I want to set the tone for this morning. One, two, three. All right. Well, like, uh, like uh, Mr. Little John said, I am the proud principal of Edison Elementary School, which is right down the street. And I have the pleasure of introducing my boss. And uh, he's sitting right over here. And uh, let's give a big round of applause to Mr. Moscovich, Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Schools. All right, very exciting. This is an awesome day. Um, I'm here on behalf of Superintendent Steinhauser. He's actually up in L.A. We, one of our teachers was selected as an L.A. County Teacher of the Year, which is pretty awesome. And so he's up there with that teacher and a few other folks celebrating all of their achievements, which is great. I also want to quickly recognize we have some of our board members with us. We have Board President Felton Williams. We had Board Member Diana Craighead and Board Member <laughs> Megan Kerr. I wanted to make sure she was there. I didn't see her behind there. Let's hear it for them. We also have some folks, we have uh, executive staff, we have folks from HRS, so th thank you very much for coming and supporting, it's a great day. You know, I, I was deciding what to wear this morning. At first I was going to wear some green and gold because like Billie Jean King, I was a Long Beach Poly grad. And, uh, but I, I wasn't sure if gr green and gold, sometimes if you wear green and gold outside of Poly, people look at you kind of funny, so I decided not to do that. But of course, I'm a massive diehard Dodgers fan. And in fact, my sons are incredibly jealous right now because I just got to come over and meet Edwin Rios and Gavin Lux. And I know they're going to be so jealous when I get home and tell them that I was able to do that. Let's hear it for our Dodgers players. That's awesome. But. But the main reason I'm really excited to be up here is actually because of all of you sitting out here. There are a couple of things that we're really passionate about in Long Beach. The first thing that we're most passionate about in Long Beach is making sure every student in our district has the opportunity to succeed. So seeing all of you out here, being able to walk schools and see you in your classrooms with your teachers is amazing. So our number one priority is making sure all of you are being as successful as possible. I would say our second priority in our district is making sure that we work with all the adults to make sure that they're giving you what you need to be successful. So you have amazing teachers, amazing principals, counselors, recreation staff. And the other thing that's really cool in Long Beach is we have amazing community partners. We have so many companies, businesses, nonprofits who come and, and support us to support you. So the fact that the LA Dodgers Foundation and Billie Jean King are here to support all of you, to make sure that you're reading, to make sure you have books in order to read, they're doing this for you, so give yourselves a round of applause. That's amazing, boys and girls. If I can have our principals just a moment, if you can come over. And grab up four of those there. Just on behalf of, uh, again, behalf of the superintendent and to thank all of our guests for supporting all of you, we have a little uh, gift bag we'll hand out to our LA Dodgers Foundation representative, Billie Jean King, and our two Dodgers players. And again, we're congratulating them for being great community partners and supporting you. So let's hear it for our guests one more time. All right, you didn't come here to hear from me, so I'm gonna hand it off to the next person. That's, who's, who's up next? I want to introduce to you the CEO of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation who made all this possible, Nicole Whiteman. Thank you. Good morning, Long Beach Unified. You all look absolutely fantastic in your Dodger hats and your L.A. Reads t-shirts. You are welcome. You are so welcome. <laughs> I am so excited to be here this morning. As mentioned, my name is Nicole Whiteman, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation. 
the official charity of your seven-time NL West Division champions, the Los Angeles Dodgers. First of all, I want to thank Principal Littlejohn and Principal Gutierrez because today would not have been possible without them and their staff. Thank you both for opening um, Oropesa today. Thank you for allowing the Edison students to also come over and join us. We really appreciate this. We appreciate partnership in so many ways. Um, I myself did not make this possible, but um, those on my team, Shatali Gala, who's not here today, Alyssa Plord, and the balance of the Dodgers Foundation team, and the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative. Today is truly possible because our two organizations have partnered uh, to make this possible. And I do want to recognize Alana Kloss, who's in the back. Therese is somewhere around the room. Maybe just give a wave. And Marjorie, who could not be here with us today. I also want to thank assist, Assistant Superintendent Moscovich. Um, how lovely that uh, Superintendent Steinhauser could not be here because an LA County uh, Teacher of the Year is from Long Beach Unified, so congratulations on that. Um, thank you to board members Diana Craighead as well as Megan Kerr. We appreciate the support that you've provided to this partnership as well. As you can see here today, the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation is bigger than baseball. We believe a great education is essential and therefore we do a lot of work to provide access, innovation, and opportunity to children at critical engagement stages from kindergarten through college. And fifth grade is a critical engagement stage. It's a critical education stage. And I know that because my youngest son Nicholas is a fifth grader and my husband is a fifth grade teacher. So how many of you like to read? Oh, that is so great to see. Reading has been a focus of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation for the last three years. You guys are excited about reading. Coming soon, coming soon. We started our LA Reads initiative to motivate young children like yourselves to read more because we know the many benefits of reading a lot from a very young age. Today, we have some very special guests with us um, to help us promote reading. Our Dodger players, as mentioned prior, Edwin Rios and Gavin Lux. I'm actually, I always say we at the Dodgers Foundation are tremendously lucky for the generosity of our players. As you guys know, they play 81 home games a year, not including postseason or any other um, activity that happens off the field. And for them to be here today, just hours before the last three regular season home games, hopefully the 99th win tonight, um, is a really big deal. I'd like to ask Gavin and Edwin to actually come up and say hello. How you guys doing today? I can't hear y'all. I said, how, okay. All right, y'all. Hey, thank you guys for having us here. Uh, we're, we're really happy. And, uh, you know, just keep reading. It's so important, you know, just to have good grades and uh, keep working hard. And uh, for all uh, for los Latinos también, este, sigan leyendo y sigan trabajando fuerte y con los grados y para adelante, ¿ok? You guys sound surprised. Edwin is a native of Puerto Rico. Um, he actually made his MLB debut in June of just this year. Um, Gavin Lux, as you guys know, they're both infielders, by the way. Gavin is an infielder as well. And yesterday, he was actually named the Branch Ricky Player of the Week, just based on his outstanding performance. Thank you, Gavin and Edwin. Appreciate you guys. We have another very special guest with us today. I have to say that as a woman, the day she was named a Dodger owner was one of the best days of my um, years with this organization. She is literally a game changer, a trailblazing athlete, a social advocate, and just a legend. One of the greatest tennis players ever. She was born and grew up right here in Long Beach, so today she is home. She grew up playing softball and tennis at local parks. She went to Long Beach Poly, as you've heard, Cal State LA. She's been a Dodger fan for many years, and now she's an owner. And tomorrow, the new main library right here in Long Beach will be named the Billie Jean King Main Library in her honor. <laughs> she
she has a tremendous list of accolades. Uh, the 100 Most Important Americans of the Century by Life magazine. 2009 recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She's in the International Hall, Tennis Hall of Fame. She won 39 Grand Slam singles, doubles, and mixed double titles, including a record 20 Wimbledon championships. She became the first woman to have a major sports venue in my hometown named after her, the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in New York. She founded the Women's Tennis Association. She co-founded the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative, which complements, complements her work with the Elton John AIDS Foundation and the Women's Sports Foundation. And today, it was just amazing to wake up this morning, I swear this wasn't planned, and see that it's the 46th anniversary of the most famous tennis match ever, the Battle of the Sexes. You guys weren't even a thought in your parents' minds. <laughs> Billie Jean King beat Bobby Riggs in the Houston Astrodome after so many people, including Bobby himself, said a woman would never beat a man at tennis, that they didn't have enough endurance, that she couldn't do it. Um, the best tennis player at the time played Bobby right before and didn't beat him, but Billie Jean King did. Thirty thousand people. Thirty thousand people were in the Houston Astrodome that day, but ninety million people across the world watched that match on televisions in their home. This match is just one of the stories that's covered in "I Am Billie Jean King," the book that we are so proud to say that every fifth grader in the entire Long Beach Unified School District will receive on behalf of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation and the Billie Jean King Leadership Institute. We are tremendously proud of this partnership. Um, it really speaks to the power of Billie Jean King's brand, the Dodger brand, the Foundation's brand, and how we can come together and do such great for so many kids. Um, I am so proud of this partnership, so proud to have you home today, Ms. King. Let's all welcome Ms. Billie Jean King. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, I just want to thank everyone and thank the Long Beach Unified Schools uh, for everything they do. Because I was born and raised here, you can read my journey in the book, the I Am, when part of the I Am series. <clears throat> but I'd really like you all to think about reading because um, my parents couldn't afford books, so I always went to the libraries. And I used the libraries constantly at the school, at the school I was attending or the other um, local branches, and of course the main library. So I hope all of you will uh, keep reading because they've proven that if you can read well, you'll have a better life, and that's very important. And all of you who speak Spanish, keep speaking Spanish. Okay, see, sí? see, sí? excelente. Okay, tres palabras. Solamente. <laughs> anyway, the reason you keep speaking Spanish is because when there's job applications, if you speak Spanish and English and other languages, you have a better chance of getting the job and getting paid more. So just know that it's very important to know your English and your Spanish and as many other languages as you can because that's the way the world's going for jobs. There's three things I'd like you to think about. Just three things, here we go. Relationships are everything. To yourself, to your family, to whatever your belief system is, to your teammates, like the two Dodgers here, Gavin and Edwin. They're amazing players. They've had to work really, really hard. But what's gonna make the difference in us winning is the relationships they have among the team because that's what really matters. Not to blame the other guy to take 100 responsibility of whatever happens, but a great teammate in life and in Dodgerland is really, really important because that makes a difference when things get tough. Number two, be a problem solver. Are it, have you thought about if you're a problem solver? Do you solve problems? That's great because that's also going to help you in your life. And then. The third one, 
is keep learning and keep learning how to learn. Keep learning and keep learning how to learn. So keep learning, it's very important. And I particularly want to thank the teachers. The teachers made such a huge difference in my life. Mrs. Hunter in third, Mr. Bamrick in sixth, Mr. Mays in ninth, and Mrs. Johnson in twelfth. They changed my life for the better. So please listen and be, be very respectful to your teacher because it's, you will, it, when you are older and you look back, you'll realize how much they helped you. They helped you so much. And to the principals and administrators, I know it's your job to lead. So thank you so much. But um, anyway. Oh, very good. Somebody can... So anyway, that's it for me. I'm out of here. So, uh, so anyway, I hope that'll help you. But just remember, it's most important to be a champion in life. Okay? Thank you. We are now gonna move into the reading portion of the program. So those of us on stage are gonna kind of exit to the left and Billie Jean is going to join the students in the middle. Go ahead. I am Billie Jean King. Fair play is such a simple idea. In sports and in life, it means you respect the rules and treat everyone equally. But sometimes people don't want to play fair, and other times they don't even want to let you play. But that never stopped me. When I was little, people called me a tomboy, which is a word I still don't like. Girls can enjoy sports just as much as boys. Today, many dads encourage their daughters to play sports, but back when I was growing up, my dad was one of the first, most important. He played equally with both me and my brother, equal time, equal respect. I was so good at baseball, my dream was to be a professional player, but when I went to my first real baseball game, I noticed something. It didn't seem fair I'd have to find another sport. Fortunately, in fifth grade, a friend asked me a question that changed my life. My first time on the court, I had no idea what I was doing. Back then, tennis was a game played mostly by wealthy people at fancy country clubs. But that wasn't my family. My mother sewed my white shorts, my racket was borrowed. A few weeks later, I heard about, the, uh, I heard about a coach named Clyde Walker, who gave free coaching on public, public, courts. public courts. Often, the right teacher can change your life. Coach Clyde taught me how to hold the racket, and he made tennis fun. That first afternoon, I was hooked. I had found the sport I loved. When my mom came to pick me up, I told her, I know what I want to do with my life. I'm going to be the number one tennis player in the world. It's true. Now I just need the right equipment. To save money for a tennis racket, I did odd jobs around the neighborhood, like taking out people's trash and weeding their gardens. As a city employee, Coach Clyde traveled to, traveled to a different park every day. My mom drove me for hours to get to, this free, get to his free coaching all across Long Beach, California. Mom didn't drive me because she thought I'd be rich. Back then, tennis, pl what? playing tennis didn't pay much money, especially if you were a woman. She drove me so I could do what I loved. Not everyone cheered me on. At one tournament, they wouldn't let. At one tournament, they wouldn't let me be in the group photo. By the time I was 12 years old at the fancy LA tennis club, I noticed something else. Everyone wore white and everyone was white. I wanted things to change. Tennis shouldn't be the sp a sport only for rich white people. It should be a sport everyone can enjoy. 
Every day I worked with Coach Clyde. I also worked at home. My brother would practice pitching baseballs, and I'd make sure my tennis serves didn't knock over any lamps. At 15, I had to write an essay about my future. Do I skip to the end? What? Do I skip to the end? Probably not. We're going to get into our next right now. Okay. You did great. Good job. Awesome. Good job. Could you see though? Yeah. Because I have to get pretty close, okay? Go ahead. Every day I worked with Coach Clyde. I also worked at home. My brother would practice pitching baseballs, and I'd make sure my tennis serves didn't knock over any lamps. At 15, I had to write an essay about my future. At 16, I started being a co coached by Alice Marble, a former number one tennis player who won 18 Grand Slam championships which are the biggest events of all. She convinced me I could win and, I, and made me realize how many strong women in sports had come before me. I was a part of something bigger than just myself. Soon, a, thing, a new thing also started happening. With Coach Alice, I went from number 19 in the country to number four. By age 17, I made it all the way to Wimbledon. We won the women's double title, which is when you play tennis with a partner. We were the youngest team to do, ever do it. We couldn't afford to go to the big Wib Wimbledon celebration ball, but we enjoyed the victory. As I started college, I was ranked number three in the country, but my school didn't give me a scholarship. Over the years, even as my career moved forward, people still didn't treat women equally. When a man won a tournament, he'd get a big check. When a woman won the same tournament, she, she was paid much less. When a man won, the reporters would ask him questions about the match. Then a woman won, they'd ask. People would tell that's just how the world worked. Women were paid less than men. They were treated worse than men. I knew I had to change it. Soon I achieved one of the year greatest victories of my career. After, win after winning Wimbledon a second time in singles, doubles, and mixed doubles, which is when men and women play together, I thought things would get better for women. They didn't. There were so many tennis greats who came before me. Each of them taught me something it's like they were there with me on one team. I was the number one player in the world, but I was being paid so little. I couldn't even get a credit card. It was time to take action. We're going to skip to the end. <laughs> Playing fair is the same in both sports and life. If everyone doesn't get the same chance, you'll never find out who's truly the best. Real victory doesn't come from points scored. It comes from how you treat others in the game. No one really wins until everyone gets to play. I'm Billie Jean King, and I champion equality.